Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of February. This month we've got an exalted Venus in our skies, which is going to be so beautiful. I will read that for every single sign. We've also got other planetary movements which I will cover in detail, but I'm recording this on the 21st of January. I'll probably upload it in maybe two, three days. But I just wanted to talk about the fact that we've had Saturn move into Aquarius. That was on the 18th of January. And what I've been observing with my client base, many of you have come back, you've come back to book your yearly general checkup. You know, you want to see what's coming up for you this year, that kind of thing. So I've been doing a lot of those readings. And one of the things I've been observing uh, both in my client base and just around me in my town, in my local community, with friends of mine, with people that I know. One of the things I'm observing is that by now you should know whether this is going to be a good 2.5 years for you or if it's going to contain some challenges. That should be known about now. So if you are starting off the year and you're finding that some things have cropped up or you're experiencing extra challenges or extra difficulties, then this could be a challenging Saturn transit for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link above to the Saturn in Aquarius transit video. If you haven't seen that one, definitely watch that because it will cover your Saturn transit for the next 2.5 years through to March 2025. That's how far we're going to cover. And if you are going through a challenging time right now, don't be too stressed out or worried about it. The whole thing isn't going to be totally challenging. I know because I've just come out of a difficult Saturn transit. I'm experiencing, for me, the energy is lighter and it's moving a lot better and things are easier. And yeah, I, I have come out of a difficult transit. But what I've observed over my last three years, so since Jan, Feb 2020, is that in a tough transit, you do more growth than you would in an easy transit. You learn so much more. Your internal riches go up. It really does. And you have to be aware. You have to be looking out for this and you'll find it. You'll see it. So keep observing your own life. Keep matching up how these reports fit with your life you know and, and for some people these reports really work and it's a nice guide and it helps get you ready for the month ahead for some people these reports they don't they're not working out at all and in that case perhaps sidereal vedic astrology is not for you perhaps the system for you might be you know tropical western might work a lot better for you equally it might be something else that you need you know but for a lot of people these reports are really helpful so i'm so glad to hear the feedback i'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying these and that it helps you get ready for the month ahead and you know equally you can watch these at the end of the month you can try and match up okay what really did happen you can see how you fit with the sidereal vedic system and I've been hearing some reports from some of you there that month to month, you know, these really work. Equally, it can be that month to month, you know, for a time, this really works. And then, you know, perhaps it, that will change. And that's, that's absolutely fine. So keep just checking in, seeing how these, these work out for you. And uh, yeah, I love doing this kind of thing because I remember that's the people that I have watched uh, when I was, you know, back in the sort of late, uh, late 2000s, 2010 onwards, I remember I used to watch, and there weren't many astrologers on YouTube back then, not many at all. And I used to love watching these, but I, I would observe that for a time I'd be with one person and then for a time I might be with someone else. And like this, I used to, I used to get my guidance. Well, anyway, I've gone on a tangent already, as I do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a news matchup. There are a couple of news items I want to go through. Then we'll talk about the energy for this month. And then I will get into the mini reports for every single sign. And I also just want to take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much 
for subscribing everyone it really helps the channel thank you for liking thank you for sharing all these things make a huge difference to the channel and it really keeps it going i think we are on the brink of the 10,000 mark and i have promised everyone that i'm going to do something really special for the 10,000 uh, episode i am going to do something special but i might have to delay it <clears throat> so if you know we get 10,000 in the next few days uh, because i am looking to relocate myself I will be making a move soon, so I'm kind of looking at mid-March onwards. I think the channel should resume to normal uh, kind of viewing. Pick a card will be back on and I'll be able to do a video each week and all that kind of thing. But until from now until, say, mid-March, uh, I am going to be very busy with client readings and I'm going to be very busy getting myself organized to you know, get myself to my new location. Those of you who've been watching for many years, you know I'll be returning back to back to my place in England. So I will keep you posted with all of that news as well. So yeah, if the 10,000 thing happens from now to about mid-March, just know that the special thing I'm gonna do is gonna come sort of mid-March onwards. I am gonna do something special for every single sign. You're gonna love it. All right, so news in brief. Let's do a news matchup. Let's see what's been going on. I do actually have um, a little bit of news that I haven't put on my system and that just came through was it yesterday or the day before and that was that Jacinda Ardern has resigned uh, yeah that's some pretty big news right and I'm not sure of the exact date but I'm pretty sure it's around the 18th of January and it's really interesting I put her details in I didn't study her too much uh, and by the way I am I'm not a fan of Jacinda Ardern gosh I think she went way too hard on all the restrictions and lockdowns there in New Zealand. I really feel for the people of New Zealand. I think a lot of people are gonna be breathing a sigh of relief. That's what certainly what I've been seeing on the internet. And I've been seeing a lot of people from New Zealand commenting uh, on some of the spiritual channels that are talking about this. And a lot of people who live there are saying, thank goodness, you know, you're, you're all feeling better about the fact that yeah, she, she's um, on her way out. But if we have a quick look at her chart, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I had a little look at her Dasha setup, but I don't have her time. So I'm not really able to comment on that. She is in a Rahu Mahadasha there. So she is going to be going through changes in her career. Uh, but we've got her as a Sagittarius moon. So isn't that interesting? We can see that as soon as she finishes Sarisati period, she leaves the job isn't that fascinating so perhaps you know I, I guess a couple of things we could say there is yeah that she because she would have had what we can say here for sure is that she would have had a tough 7.5 years um, how much is she on the spiritual path I have no idea what kind of you know reward is she going to look forward to in this next 2.5 years again I, I can't say I can't comment but I'm sure Saturn is um, being the karmic accountant and, you know, uh, who knows? I, I, I can't say about justice and this and that because I don't know. It's all too complicated for me. What I can tell you, though, is that she has come out of a very difficult period. And when you come out of Sarisati period, Saturn wants to reward you during that 2.5 years when you come out of this phase. Now, if you're very much on the spiritual path and you, you know, um, the kind of people who consult with me, and I've seen this so many times now in my clients' lives, in their life stories, and I can see it, that 2.5 years, typically, you are rewarded. You are rewarded with, you know, and it can, yeah, it can be rest. It can be, um, you know, a, a big change in your life and things like that. But how much of a reward there is here for someone like this I, I don't know and I can't comment what I've seen from the outside you know being an Aussie uh, temporarily based here in Sydney Australia we did have tough lo lockdowns as well but nothing like what New Zealand had um, New Zealand went through a very difficult last two to three years it's been really really hard and yeah I'm on the outside. I can't comment on what kind of karma someone should have or not or 
you know, I'm, I'm not able to say. But what I am able to see is that, uh, you know, she's coming out of a tough astrological time. So I, I can see that. I can see that right there. The other item of news that I wanted to cover is just to talk a little tiny bit about the Ukraine war. I said in my last report that, what did I say? I think I said March onwards. Well, March onwards, we are going to have a shift. But I had said, and I'm just going to bring up a transit wheel so that I can have a little look myself now. Um, I had said that after, say, for example, I think the 30th of January, no, not January, the 30th of December, I think I said that things should improve. And I have been reading the news reports and they haven't improved. So that part of my prediction was not right. And I think I also said that the, there's another point where it could improve, and that is during March. So mid-March, I'm going to study this further and I'm going to cover it in the March episode. But yeah, we've got Mars heading into Gemini. Is that going to be better for the Ukraine situation? And now I'm not too sure. But one thing I said in my last episode was that I do believe the war should come to an end, say, for example, July, August this year. I'm still hoping for that. And what I'll do is I'll stay on the news. I'll keep watching it. I want to see if it comes true as well. So let's see uh, if, if that comes true. I... I'm not sure if it will, I don't know, but I'm hoping it will because I'm seeing Venus go retrograde and I think that could be enough to possibly, for things, for things to really change because Venus and Mars have been, every time they're close or conjunct or there's some significant relationship between the two, I've observed tensions in that area. So let's see. Let's see. And I'm, I've really got my fingers crossed. I mean, I've got my fingers crossed that problems stop now, I, you know, and I'm praying that that region and anyone who's in a difficult part of the world, you know, that you don't have to go through that. So, yeah, my wishes are in the right place. Uh, but, yeah, I, I did predict that I thought there would be relief say for example 30th December onwards and that has not happened according to what I'm seeing. So I'm staying on this. I want to see what happens as well um, and hopefully maybe in the March episode I might be able to sit down and do some research and look further and see if I can update you with some more information there. Um, I've got the note here that there could even be relief this month when Venus is exalted. She is the lord of where Mars is this month. So this could diminish Mars's capacity to do things because Mars is the real doer. When Mars is lorded by Venus, I have observed this in birth charts that people, uh, they don't do so much, you know, they don't want to do so much because they're Mars, they can do attitude and ability is kind of muffled or stifled when Venus is really strong. So I have observed that. So let's see if the time when Venus is exalted, you know, we might see some relief. So we're looking at 15th Feb to mid-March. So possibility there that maybe tensions might ease in that region. I'm certainly hoping so. Let's take a look at the energy for this month. So we've got Saturn in his Multricon sign now for 2.5 years, Saturn in Aquarius. I've also had a look at the D9 chart, uh, D9 Navamsha transit, and it's really interesting. And I just happened to see it by accident because I just happened to be clicking through and then I got distracted. And then when I came back, my eyes fell on the D9 transit chart and I saw, oh, wow, Saturn's going to be exalted in D9 from the 1st of Feb through to the 15th of Feb. So I've got here that this is great energy for getting organized, for structuring your year ahead. We've still got really good, you know, energy now to be constructing your year ahead, to be constructing your plans for the year ahead. So don't just think that it's, 
you know, we set our New Year's resolutions on the 1st of January. No, there's time to keep planning this year. We're still in the very early part of this year and we've got this beautiful exalted Saturn in D9, Navamsha. So from 1st Feb through to 15th Feb. So that's really amazing. Uh, we've got Jupiter in his own sign and he will be through to about mid-April. Okay, so we've got great energy here for spiritual growth, learning anything new. Um, you know, and it, this is that kind of come together type energy, you know, expanding our our desire to 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 come together, to be in community, to to experience the oneness, you know, the all is one. We've got this beautiful Jupiter in Pisces there. We have Venus exalted from 15th Feb to 11th March. I believe that's the big news for Feb. I'm excited about that. This is beautiful energy for love, great energy for self-love, self-care, feeling good within yourself. Venus is self-worth, right? So, you know, and, and Venus is... Also, Venus connects in with physical health, looking good, feeling good, all of that. So we've got that beautiful energy here this month. Uh, for those of you who are into like Valentine's Day and all that kind of thing, uh, if you're not like me who is skeptical and cynical that, oh, it's another commercial day. Well, when, when was the last time we had Venus exalted in February? Well, it's interesting. It was 2020. I looked that up. And then I looked at when is the next time it's going to be exalted in Feb, and that's 2025. So, you know, this is, this is quite nice energy for love and all that kind of thing. So, you know. Uh, now, we've got the usual node activity. We've got Rahu in Aries pushing us to be our individual selves more and more. We've got Ketu de-emphasizing the focus on other people. Isn't that interesting? So this is Rahu and Aries, me, 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 right? And I've just got uh, a little note here to say a great example of this is Prince Harry's book, Spare. Um, I, I don't know if I can do another link card, but if I can't link it up here, I'll link it somewhere below. You can have a look at my video where I've talked a little bit about Prince Harry and some of the other royals. And on that video, many of you commented and said you'd love to see another one. I will definitely do a part two. So look out for that in the next few weeks. I will find some time to record a part two where we will catch up on the royal family charts. And, and I, there were some other charts I didn't really get to talk about. So I'll, I'll cover those in the next episode. But yeah, that is always fun to talk about. And now I think we are going to cover the mini reports. So for those of you who don't know your sidereal Vedic astrology coordinates, I've got a link in the description below. You will be able to click on that, type in your details, work out what is your ascendant, your moon, and you can also look at the sun as well. I know it's not traditional to do so in Vedic astrology. We typically just look at the moon and the ascendant, but if you would like to look at all three, you're very welcome. Because I've had questions from people in the past saying, can I look at my sun sign? So I, I thought, why not? Yes, absolutely. So those of you who'd like to watch the whole video, you're very welcome to stick around as well. Aries, Aries welcome. This is Aries, sidereal Vedic Aries, right? Aries ascendant, Aries moon, Aries sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have coming up in your month ahead? So on the 5th of Feb, we have got a full moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra, happening in your fourth house. So a complex matter at home could be more visible at this time. And all you need to do is just reach for higher energies. Just reach for that higher perspective. See if you can be bigger than the problem. See if you can keep your vibe high, keep your vibe detached. And just by you doing that, that could transform things for absolutely everyone around you. You don't need to say anything to anyone. It's just an internal shift in you. So there could be some complex energies at home to do with family that could just be a little bit more visible on the 5th of Feb. Now 14th, 15th Feb onwards, I should say, 15th Feb I've got here, 
uh, 15th Feb onwards, Venus is exalted and Jupiter is in his own house. Both of these are going to be in Pisces in your 12th house. So this is really quite interesting because Saturn's in your 11th house. This is a time for you, you where you want to be working, you want to be striving for opportunities, you want to be making the most of this beautiful Saturn energy that you're blessed with over the next 2.5 years. But it's so interesting, you've actually got really great energy to relax. So I've probably hyped you up in previous videos to say, come on, you've got all this, you know, great Saturnian energy and you can work and achieve and network and do all these great things. But if you find that 15th Feb onwards, it makes sense for you to go slow, to unwind, to relax, to rest, even to take a short retreat or do something for just pure relaxation, do that. Okay, this is a good time for you to do that because you're going to have, you know, plenty of time across the next 2.5 years to really go for it and make the most of that Saturn energy. Mid-Feb onwards, you know, you've got this beautiful energy that's inviting you to the relax. So, so you can do that if, if that makes sense, right? Uh, now the sun is going to cross over Saturn in the sky. This is around 15th Feb. Sun is going to be moving from your 10th house to your 11th house. So this, when we look from the sun's perspective, this is excellent entrepreneurial energy. So if you are feeling it when it comes to work you, and you do want to kind of put your foot on the accelerator and really go for it, uh, then you've just got beautiful energy here. And it's, it's the kind of thing where you've got this nice energy that will help you relax if you are really busy. So that's fantastic. It just depends on the structure of your year and the structure of your next 2.5 years as well. So how you're going to play this month, it's up to you. You've got some you know, choice here, free will wise. Uh, well, we all do every month, but you know, some of you will want to really get on with it and be working equally. Some of you will see this as an opportunity that, you know what, it does make sense for me to do a bit less. I, I myself am not doing as much on the channel uh, across Feb and March, so I relate to this. Now, 20th Feb, and even though I don't have particular placements in Aries. Uh, 20th Feb, we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius Sattva Vishak Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a powerful new moon and this is a powerful time for you to wish for something to heal. If there's something you want to heal in your life and it could be a psychological dynamic or pat pattern or something that's uh, even something ancestral, something that's been passed down. It could be to do with physical body as well. Could be to do with a group or a collective. If you want to pray for a group or a collective or a nation or any of that, you can do that on this day. So that's the 20th Feb, beautiful new moon there. Aquarius, Sattva Vishak, Nakshatra. Aries, I'm liking the look of this month for you. I'm excited for what you've got here. You've got Venus exalted in the 12th house. I mean, you've got the best Venus here, really. You can't get better than that. So enjoy however you're going to uh, choose to enjoy that beautiful Venus energy. I wish you well, Aries. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 5th of Feb, there is a full moon in Cancer Ashleshya Nakshatra happening in your third house. So you might be able to see some complicated energies in your friendship circles, particularly around this time on the 5th of Feb. It might just become very apparent to you what are the cracks in the relationships with your friends or what are the difficulties what are the complications could be to do with you it could be to do with your friends you know two or three friends but it has nothing to do with you that's very possible as well could be to do with younger siblings as well okay uh, and i've got the note here you choosing to look fully and remain detached could save a friendship at this time so you know, you can see, you can acknowledge 
that things aren't great here in your friend circle or with your siblings or whatever it is, you can see it, but you not reacting, you being detached, you having space for them to possibly come and talk to you, that could really help people around you or improve a relationship or even save a relationship at this time. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, we have got Venus exalted and she is there with Jupiter, Jupiter in his own house, right? Venus is exalted, Jupiter in own house in Pisces in your 11th house. So this is wonderful energy. Oh Taurus, I'm so excited for you. I think you need some good energy and it's here. So we've got beautiful energy for being social, for getting projects off the ground, okay? If you wanna network, if you want to, and this could be updating your social media, beautifying your social media. Maybe you wanna change a profile picture or do something like that. Maybe you wanna get pictures taken. This could even be a really uh, great energy for that too. This could be good as well for earning money, uh, opportunities, new opportunities coming to you. You will be quite attractive at this time. So this is beautiful energy. Now the sun is gonna cross over Saturn around the 15th of Feb. And the sun is passing from your ninth house to your 10th house. So you've got great momentum here when it comes to work. Okay, the sun is really shining. Sun is moving there into your 10th house. So it's a great time to start new work projects, to be seen, okay? If there's something where you wanna do something, propose something, or you're really gonna be visible, you're gonna be seen, this is ideal. So especially from the 15th of, on, on 15th of Feb onwards, this is your time to shine at work. This is your time to take the lead. Okay, and Saturn is there too. Saturn will keep you humble. Saturn will keep you hardworking and driven, right? Saturn, a little bit of limitation right there. But that's a good thing because, you know, I really like uh, some Saturnian groundedness or limitation. It keeps a person from going off the rails. I have seen this in many charts. For example, when you've got Saturn aspecting Rahu Ketu axis always a good thing. I do see that. Actually, we should we should check that with some of the royal family. I'll do that. I'll write a note actually uh, and do that in the next episode that I, I talk about that. Does he have, uh, does Prince Harry have Saturn aspecting Rahu Ketu? Yeah, that'll be interesting. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. All right, so on the 20th of Feb, You've got, and if you missed my outlook on the royal family, it'll be linked below and you'll be able to see, I've just kind of studied all their charts. Um, now on the 20th of Feb, there is a new moon, Aquarius Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. So this is an excellent time to wish for career growth, to wish for the next stepping stone to be shown to you. Uh, you know, you can put in a wish for, gosh, I'd love to be doing that kind of job or this kind of job or whatever it is that excites you. Uh, could also be a good time to wish for more leadership at this time as well. Taurus, I'm loving the look of this month for you, especially what you've got going on there in your 11th house. It's gonna be a lovely month ahead. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini, Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Gemini, what have we got going on this month? Well, on the 5th of Feb, we have a full moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra, which is happening for you in your second house. So at this time, you might be able to see some complicated energies present in your family relationships. You might be able to see some of the cracks. You might be able to see what's not working. You might be able to see that in its fullness. This could be in connection with you, but equally this could be just family members around you. You can see the dynamics. You can see what's not working. A conscious decision at this time to be bigger than the problems to be detached, to be compassionate, to be there for people around this full moon, that could really help. Okay, so just bear that in mind. 5th Feb, we've got a full moon and something will be more visible 
in your family situation. Just be compassionate. That's, that's all you have to do. You don't need to say anything or do anything. This is just about you energetically kind of just being there for people. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, we have Venus exalted and Jupiter is in his own house. This is in Pisces. Both of them are there in Pisces in your 10th house. So this is a really good energy to expand your work. Okay, I know Venus doesn't typically like being in the 10th, but if you are work focused, it's good. You can get things done. You can achieve things. I've got the note here, which is an interesting one, but be careful of coming across as a know-it-all at this time. Okay, so that's from 15th Feb onwards. So just take care of that. You might come across as though you know everything that and that's that Jupiter in his own house transiting your 10th there so it's possible depending on what you've got going on in your birth chart as well okay so this won't play out that way for everybody it might for some of you though um, I've got the note here recognize the work of others share credit and you're going to excel now we've got the Sun crossing over Saturn around the 15th of Feb so this is Sun passing from your eighth house to your ninth house and I do believe your energy is going to start to pick up so if you've been feeling tired demotivated like over the last maybe couple of months maybe you've just been feeling sluggish or you know you just don't don't want to do anything uh, it, this could be why and your energy is going to pick up okay so things are going to improve uh, I've got the note here don't overexert yourself and definitely be careful with run-ins with authority figures or f your father you know that kind of thing so this is 15th Feb onwards you're going to want to take care of that you're going to want to just make sure okay yes you're picking up energy but you know don't run into any issues with authority I guess right uh, so now on the 20th of Feb new moon we've got Aquarius Sattva Bishak Nakshatra We've got a new moon, 20th Feb, new moon, Aquarius, Satya Bishak, Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So this is an excellent time, Gemini, to wish for some long distance travel plans. If you haven't gone anywhere for a while and you want to go somewhere, then this is the time to plant that seed. All right. Or you could even start planning it. You could make a plan uh, that you would like to do some long distance travel, you know, maybe later in the year or whatever that is but Gemini I am liking the look of this month for you I'm liking the look of this month for you from a work perspective if you want to be quite work focused and and even if you want to skill up in some area that's going to benefit your work this is a particularly good month to do that any sort of learning that's going to help you excel at work that's really going to going to work well this month Gemini but I want to thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Cancer Cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Cancer Ascendant Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology this month on the 5th of Feb we have a full moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra this is happening for you in your first house yes this is your full moon cancer this is it so at this time of the 5th of Feb with the beautiful full moonlight on you're going to see something and you're going to see the complex energies that have been in your life or that are in your life something's going to make sense to you you're going to see possibly what's been holding you back as well okay so that there are just going to be some complicated energies that you're going to become aware of at this time I've got the note here take time to expand beyond your problems and this is particularly significant for you cancer because we do have Jupiter casting fifth aspect on your moon okay so of all the signs this time this month you're going to have a particular ability to expand beyond your problems and see the bigger picture and be okay be okay with the fact that okay there's this there's this complicated stuff going on but I'm actually okay you're really going to feel that hopefully at the start of this month 
Now from the 15th of Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted there in Pisces, we've got Jupiter in his own house there in Pisces, and that is happening in your ninth house. So this is a really great time to connect with teachers or gurus. It's a good time to learn something new. So you've got great energy here for study. It is good energy here for work. This could be a time where you feel called to step up and teach. This could be a time where you feel like, you know what, it's time for me to share my knowledge with the world, or perhaps you take on, you know, uh, you become a mentor at work or something, you take someone under your wing, that kind of thing. Yes, there's some lovely energy here for that. Now we've got the sun crossing over Saturn around the 15th of Feb. So that is sun passing from the seventh to the eighth house for you. And this could be a period of time where energetically you might be feeling just a bit tired. You might be feeling demotivated, low on energy. It's a good time for you to rest, Cancer. If you're feeling that way, you're not alone. There will be fellow Cancerians all around the world who will be feeling the same way. So um, definitely cut yourself some slack and rest. I have the note here, you will be more empathetic at this time and able to see hidden agendas. You will be able to see behind the scenes, possibly get some ideas as to what your co-workers are up to around you. This can manifest in that way. Now on the 20th of Feb, we have a new moon. This is an Aquarius Satvishak new moon happening in your eighth house. So this is a really powerful time for you to wish for healing, possibly. If there's something that you need to heal, this could be to do with trauma. This could even be to do with uh, some ancestral thing as well. But yeah, if, if there's something you want to heal from your past that is still in your now, that's in your present, and you know that this thing isn't yours kind of thing, this is a good time to wish for healing for that. Um, you could also wish for a spiritual gift to come online or for your intuition to be enhanced at this time. Uh, that would be another really good thing to wish for on this beautiful new moon that we've got here, Cancer. But I'm liking the look of this month here for you, especially with the 15th of Feb onwards, that activity there in your ninth house. This could even be a time, Cancer, where you plan some long distance travel or something like that. You, you start thinking about that. Uh, th this is some really nice energy for that as well. But I'm going to wish you well, Cancer. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 5th of Feb, we have got a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra in your 12th house. So you might be able to see what has been complicating your spiritual development or your spiritual growth at this time. You might be able to see blocks or, you know, perhaps you've been procrastinating, something like that. Something along these lines is going to become very apparent to you uh, at the time of this full moon. And what I would say here is, is that this is a good time to work out how can you simplify your life? How can you simplify your daily routine? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's kind of like there's something complicating your life. You'll be able to see it and you'll know what to do. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, Venus is exalted and Jupiter is in his own house. Both are in Pisces and that's happening for you in your eighth house. So this could be a really passionate time in your relationship, which is beautiful. Uh, a lovely time to work on or build your occult gifts and talents as well. And we've got the sun crossing over Saturn around the 15th of Feb. So we've got sun moving from sixth to your seventh house. So it's quite likely that you've been career focused, um, but after 15th of Feb, it's going to be good for you to, if you can slow down and don't do as much because this can be energetically tiring or draining sun in the seventh. The other thing is it's a good time for you to be more empathetic. Uh, and it's a really great time for you to spend more quality time with your partner. 
And it could be a time where you attract a partner as well if you are single. Now on the 20th of Feb, there is a new moon happening, Aquarius, Satyabhishak, Nakshatra in your seventh house. So this is a really powerful time to wish for a healing in your relationship. All right, so if you feel, if you're in a committed relationship, especially, and it's a committed relationship, we've got the seventh house here. So if you're in some kind of committed relationship, it's a good time to wish for a healing in that relationship if you need one. Uh, and if you are single, it's a great time to wish for a partner as well. Leo, I'm liking the look of this month for you, especially with that Venus exalted and Jupiter in own house in your eighth house. That, that looks really good, especially if you are, you know, working on enhancing your intuition or tapping your occult gifts. This could be a beautiful month for you ahead. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So this month on the 5th of Feb, we have got a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra, which is happening for you in your 11th house. So there could be some complex energies that become particularly visible to you regarding your oldest siblings. It could be related to friends, especially friends in your network circle, your work circle. Uh, but there's something about some complicated energies that are going to be highlighted <clears throat> at this time. So the guidance here is simply just to be high vibe and detached and all this is going to come good. So it's not like you have to do anything at this time, but it's very likely that you are going to become aware of just some complicated energies in relationships around you. You're going to see it. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted and Jupiter in his own house. This of course is in Pisces, Venus and Jupiter in Pisces. And this for you is in your seventh house. So these are actually really good energies for your work. Okay, so if you feel like putting yourself into your work this month, that's going to be a really good thing, especially if you are self-employed or if you work on a project by project basis. This is a time where you can really be productive, get a lot done. Now Venus will make your work look beautiful. So if you are designing something for social media, maybe you're an architect, <clears throat> we do have the seventh house here and um, you know, very often architects work on a project by project basis. But you know, Venus will make your work look stunning. So that's good. And Jupiter is the great visionary and he's thinking long term. So yes, you'll be able to get a lot done. You'll be able to visualize, you know, how you would like things to go for the long term. It's, it's looking really good on that front. Now the sun crosses over Saturn from around the 15th of Feb. So 15th of Feb, sun is moving from your fifth house to your sixth house. And this is really beautiful energy for entrepreneurs or anyone who's starting new projects, uh, especially from 15th Feb onwards, you're going to feel fantastic when it comes to career. You should be able to pick up new clients, achieve some wins, get things done, be productive. It's going to feel really good 15th of Feb onwards. This is really wonderful energy for work. Now on the 20th of Feb, there's a new moon happening in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra on your, in your sixth house. So this is a powerful time for you to wish for next steps in career to be shown to you. You could also wish for more clients or more projects or a bigger budget for what it is that you do. This is the time to wish for that, Virgo. I'm liking the look of this month for you. It's especially a work focused month ahead for you. So I feel like you should be able to get a lot done. So thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have got on the 5th of Feb, a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your 10th house. So complex energies at work are going to be more visible. You're going to be able to 
spot the work relationships that aren't working as well at the moment. <clears throat> you might become aware of dynamics at work that it, it's complicated or there's no easy solution. Yeah, this, this could be interesting. So you're, I think you're going to see a lot uh, on the 5th of Feb. That's the potential of this full moon, that you're going to look around your workplace in the relationships, you might see cracks or in the dynamics or in the systems even or something. There's, there's going to be something at work. You're going to become more aware of what's going on. And it's kind of the kind of thing where you becoming more aware of this might be all that's needed. Okay, so it's not like you have to do anything or you have to say anything to anyone, but you becoming more aware could actually energetically improve things for everyone around you. So just bear that in mind on the 5th of Feb. On the 15th of Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted and Jupiter is in his own house. This of course is all happening, Venus and Jupiter in Pisces. And this is happening for you in your sixth house. Now, Jupiter in six can be a little bit tough on your health. So rest if you're feeling tired. This is really good energy for your career though. Uh, you know, it, it's good energy for serving others selflessly. It's a good energy this month to just put your head down and work. And you're not particularly working for any reward or any of that, you're just working, right? Now your love life could be mixed, okay? Because on the one hand, yes, Venus is exalted there in your sixth, but she's in the sixth, okay? So uh, there could be some mixed results when it comes to love. There could be some really nice moments, but equally it could be tough as Venus is in your sixth house. So take it easy with love, see how it goes. <clears throat> if your love life is in great shape, just enjoy this energy, it, it should be good for you. Now the sun is crossing over Saturn around the 15th of Feb. So sun is moving from your fourth house to your fifth house. So definitely be careful with expenses because they could run quite high at this time. Just bear that in mind. Now on the 20th of Feb, there is a new moon in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So you can wish for a healing of your heart, your romantic life, your love life. You could wish for new creative ideas. You could wish for healing for your child. You could wish for a child if that's something that you want as well. Um, also bear in mind that around the 20th of Feb, you might be quite a bit more fertile. So just bear that in mind as well. Libra, I'm loving the look of this month for you. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 5th of Feb, we've got a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your ninth house. So there could be some complicated energies that you are able to see more, you're able to witness more around authority figures. This could be your boss, this could be your father, you know, this could equally be just to do with yourself. This could be you observing and seeing who's really in charge of your life. Do you feel in charge of your own life? Or do you feel like society has a say? Do you, do you feel like there are certain opinions that have more of a say in your life rather than what you think or what you want to do? Are you being held back by something? You know, I've got the note here, do you care more about what society says? Do you care more about what your parents say? You know, some of this might become more visible to you. So just become aware, just become aware and fearlessly look and with as much truth and honesty look at yourself as you can, just to look, not to do anything, not to say anything to anyone. It's just awareness. We've got a full moon here. You can become very aware of some things. And when we deeply become aware of something, we've learned the lesson. Sometimes that's enough. Isn't that incredible? Sometimes awareness is so powerful that it can break a dynamic. It can break a pattern. It can 
transform something forever. I've seen that in my own life. I've, I've got a couple of good stories about that, but that's for another time. Now, 15th Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted and Jupiter is in his own house. So this is all happening in Pisces. Both of them, Venus exalted, Jupiter in own house in Pisces. For you is in your fifth house. This is beautiful energy for your love life here. It's a great time to be in love, to fall in love, you know, and you don't need another person. You can fall in love with life. You know, sometimes you wake up early enough and you see the dew on the grass or you see a beautiful sunset or something. And that's enough to just feel fantastic, isn't it? Uh, you might meet someone new. I've got the note here. You might be feeling creative or artistic at this time. This is beautiful energy for that. Absolutely. Now the sun crosses over Saturn. This is around the 15th of Feb. So the sun is passing from your third house to your fourth house. So for the first half of the month, you're riding high, you're feeling confident. You've got great solar energy there, sun in the third. But then, and, and you might be quite social uh, up until the 15th of Feb. But then 15th Feb onwards, you know, you might be a bit more homebound. You might be concerned with things to do with home. Um, you might be concerned about your mother, relationship with mother, that can be a possibility. You might also find that your expenses run higher or there's something, there's something to do with home taking more of your attention from the 15th of Feb onwards. Um, it could also just be that you want to be at home more and you want to relax. could just be that, right? So look out for that. Now on the 20th of Feb, there's a new moon happening in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra, happening in your fourth house. So this is a perfect time for you and you are more homebound anyway. Yeah, so 20th Feb, new moon, good time to wish for a home renovation or a new place to live or to materialize your dream home, whatever that is, right? You can wish for that here on the 20th of Feb on that new moon there. Scorpio, I'm loving the look of this month for you, especially that sun in your third house there up until the 15th of Feb. That's also great energy for you to get work, for you to put yourself out there, for you to network, to shine at work, uh, all that kind of thing. Go for a promotion. Really, really good energy there, Scorpio. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and your health should be good too. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 5th of Feb, we've got a full moon happening in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. And this full moon will be there in your 8th house. Okay, so you might become aware of some complicated energies that are around your relationship with your partner. Uh, you could also see some complications in your partner's family. Okay, so to do with the in-laws or your partner's family, if there are complicated energies in relationships there, that might become more visible to you at this time. So this is just a good time to see that, to observe it and to be there for others if they need some space okay or if they need to talk to someone or something like that you might be that person that they come and talk to now on the 15th of feb onwards we've got venus exalted we've got jupiter in his own house so of course this is all happening in pisces venus in pisces jupiter in pisces both of them are there in your fourth house this is beautiful energy for being at home. This is great energy for being with the family, great energy to renovate or redecorate your place. You're going to be inspired to do creative things around the home possibly or to do local things, to have a good time. Uh, you could be spending time with your mum as well, um, you know, cooking, having fun at home, really nice energy here. Now the sun crosses over Saturn around 15th of Feb and sun is moving from your second house to your third house. So for the first half of the month, you're really family focused. Okay, and it is, it's all that you're at home with the family, cooking delicious food, you know, enjoying all of that. Second half of the month onwards, you might be more social. You might be going out with friends, you might be networking, you might be a bit more work focused, you might be presenting your ideas at work. 
Um, if you are looking for work, brilliant time to get work. Okay, you'll be seen, you can get a promotion, that kind of thing. So some really good energy here, Sagittarius. And then on the 20th of Feb, we've got a new moon, Aquarius, Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your third house. So you could wish for a healing in your friend circle. You could wish for something wonderful to happen with you and your siblings or um, a healing to do with you and your siblings. You could also wish to attract your soul tribe at this time as well. So if you don't have friends or the friends that you do have, you just feel like I've changed, I've grown, I don't connect with these people anymore. Maybe you need to attract some new people into your life. This is a really good time to wish for that, Sagittarius. I'm loving the look of this month for you, Sagittarius. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 5th of Feb, we have a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. It's in your seventh house. So there could be some complex energies that become visible. And this is complicated energies in your relationship with your partner, the person you're committed to, you know, your spouse, uh, you know, your, your partner, someone you've made a commitment to them, you're with them. So some complicated energies might become a lot more visible at this time. I have the note here, become aware without becoming triggered by anything that you see and just allow the feelings to pass and just this is a kind of a hold space sort of time just hold the space and be bigger than the problems recognize that this too shall pass whatever this issue is it's actually small in the bigger picture in the bigger scheme of life okay so this 5th of Feb this full moon but you can have a fullness of self where people can be there true authentic authentic selves um, people you know their shadow can be there you can you can be with their shadow and not be upset or not be triggered right that's another really great thing and, and we're all on the spiritual path aspiring to be that person aren't we we want to be that person who doesn't get freaked out if we see someone else's <laughs> shadow right so so you're on the path you're doing it okay and just and feel the fullness of that on the 5th of Feb. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted. We've got Jupiter in his own house. And of course, this is all happening in Pisces, right? That's where Venus exalts and that's where Jupiter is in his own house. Uh, this is happening in your third house. I'm just remembering that is a yoga, isn't it? I should have considered that as I was putting these notes together, but that's okay. <laughs> this is just good energy, right? So this is happening in your third house. Now this is a lovely energy for socializing. We've got Jupiter in the third. Yeah, Jupiter in the third, there could be feeling, you could be feeling a bit tired. Uh, if that's the case, that'll be your Jupiter in the third there. It might tire you out a little bit, it might drain you at times. So rest if you feel the need. But Venus exalted in the third, she loves to socialize and that is fantastic. You could meet someone new. If you're single, this is a good time to possibly meet someone new. Um, this is really nice energy for short trips to get away from it all. And that might be really good for your Jupiter. So that's a good thing there. But definitely be, ex be careful of expenses this month because they could run a little bit high as well. Now the sun crosses over Saturn from around the 15th of Feb. So the sun's going to go from your first house to your second house. So the first half of the month, you're quite self-focused. Um, you could be tired. Sometimes sun in the first, people can get headaches and things like that. That is a possibility as well. So it could be a sun thing, could be a Jupiter thing if you're feeling tired. But the second half of the month, you might be more family focused. And you could also be focused on your wealth, on building bigger wealth, that kind of thing. But definitely, yeah, from the sun's perspective, expenses could go high and at times you might feel tired or drained. So that's just something to bear in mind this month. Now on the 20th of Feb, we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius, Sattva Bishak Nakshatra in your second house. So this is a time to wish for a healing within your family. You know, if there's something that you want healed in your family, and this could be, this could be something that 
has been passed down the generations or some dynamic or pattern that is repeating definitely wish for healing for that uh, and this is also a good time to wish for either stability in your finances or for the big wealth to come through right we could all do with more wealth isn't it and like and, and wishing for you know your safety net to be bigger or your savings to be bigger or that kind of thing but Capricorn I'm liking the look of this month for you despite the fact that you know it could be a little bit tiring it could be that you see some expenses run a bit high but otherwise uh, you've got some nice energies to work with here all right well we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aquarius ascendant Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now on the 5th of Feb we've got a full moon happening in Cancer Ashleisha Nakshatra which is happening in your sixth house so you could discover some complicated energies around you in the realm of your work or your service to the world uh, if you work with clients you might discover some complicated energies to do with your clients equally this could be to do with you and another but it could also be that you're observing complicated energies in, in relationships around you this could manifest like that this could illuminate something to do with a legal case this could also illuminate something to do with your competition so competitors in the marketplace you might just become aware of some complicated energies at this time the awareness is enough uh, you don't have to do anything or say anything to anyone it will just be enough to become aware you can learn something at this time that could really help you going forward now on the 15th of Feb onwards we've got Venus exalted and Jupiter in his own house both are in Pisces and this is happening in your second house so you might be tempted this is so cool to buy something beautiful I love this one for you Aquarius if you want to buy something beautiful and expensive this is the month to do it right so if this has been something you've been eyeing out and you want to buy something you want to acquire something uh, this is a really good month where you could buy that thing and love it for many many years to come because you know how it is sometimes when you buy something and maybe you've been shopping for it for ages but then you buy it and then you're like well, this is not actually my style you know that shouldn't happen this month this is the kind of month where you buy something you'll love it and wear it for ages or keep it for ages something like that right so yeah this is good energy health and relationship with family should also be good at this time now the Sun is crossing over Saturn around 15th of Feb so we're gonna have Sun transition from your 12th house to your first house around the 15th of Feb so first half of the month you might find it hard to sleep at times if that's the case just know that it's meant to be that way it's because that sun is uh, in your 12th house there and this you know I've seen this manifest in birth charts I've seen people who've got like especially Sun and Mercury uh, in the 12th oh, yeah those people they tend not to sleep too much I have seen that so just just bear that in mind but it's a transition second half of the month you might be focused on yourself you might be focused on your physical health as well and it's a really good time to restart an exercise routine if you have dropped off okay so if there's been an exercise routine that you were doing and you were loving maybe you're doing it for some months but then you dropped off for a couple of months now's the time to pick it back up and on the 20th of Feb there's a new moon happening Aquarius Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your first house so this is an excellent time to wish for a physical healing or for more energy more vitality you know that you want to be invincible that kind of thing Aquarius I'm liking the look of this month for you especially these nice energies here with Venus uh, and Jupiter in your second house it's really good health and relationship with family should be really good at this time so I'm wishing you well Aquarius and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now on the 5th of Feb we've got a full moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra in your fifth house so at this time you might be able to see 
in a, in a sort of enhanced way. You might be able to see some complicated energies to do with your love life. There could be some complicated energies to do with your children or to do with your creativity. Something's going to become more apparent to you and you're going to be able to see what the complications are. Okay, something about that is going to become more visible at this time. And the guidance here is just to become detached and just to observe and allow any feelings to pass uh, and you becoming more aware is enough. It's like you becoming deeply aware of something can be enough to, to break it forever that you learn the lesson or that you learn whatever it is, right? So this is, a, this is a really cool full moon that we're having here on the 5th of Feb. There is potential for healing through deep awareness. Now on the 15th of Feb onwards, we've got Venus exalted, Jupiter in his own house, both are here in Pisces in your first house. So this is a great time to indulge in your spirituality, a great time to improve your diet as well, um, and a great time to restart any fitness routines that might have stopped as well. So you know how sometimes you do a fitness routine for a few months and then maybe you, you stop for a few weeks and then you kind of, it's hard to get back into it. This is the time to pick that back up again uh, if you can. Now Jupiter in the first house can be tiring, so don't push yourself. If you're feeling tired this month, uh, definitely relax, look after yourself, nourish yourself as well. It's so important. We forget that, you know, because we're so trained to work and be busy and look after everyone else, and, but very important to look after yourself too. Now the sun crosses over Saturn around the 15th of Feb. So the sun is going to pass from the 11th house to the 12th house. Now the first half of the month, you've got this beautiful energy with sun in the 11th there. So that's great for socializing, great for going after new opportunities, great for more money coming in, being seen, being recognized especially. Really beautiful energy for that. Second half of the month though, you are, I believe, going to be more introspective, you know, more spiritually focused. Uh, another thing to watch out for is you might find it hard to sleep. So if you're finding that, you know, second half of the month onwards, that's why. Now on the 20th of Feb, there's a new moon in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra, happening in your 12th house. So this is an excellent time to wish for a renewal to your discipline. That is an interesting one I've got here. I was contemplating this one. Uh, but you've got Saturn in the 12th as well. Discipline is going to help you. Now I've got the note here, discipline is going to help you retain time and energy across the next 2.5 years. You are going to want to be disciplined, Pisces. That's going to be important. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, this, that's important. Discipline is going to be the thing. This might not seem like the most obvious guidance here, for a new moon in the 12th house. Uh, you can also wish for, let's see some other things you can wish for. You can wish for spiritual growth, that you use your intuition more and more, that your connection with the divine is stronger. You can wish for uh, secrets to be revealed possibly if that's something you need. But I do think of all the things that you might want at this time, what's really going to aid you is, is going to be a renewal to your d discipline. Because I'm also thinking of Aquarius and the Lord of course of Aquarius is Saturn. And Saturn is 12th from for you now. So discipline is going to matter uh, over the next 2.5 years. You're kind of, you're kind of in, in, in this training, ground. Saturn's, Saturn's training you now. He's working with you. You're working with the best cosmic personal trainer in the whole universe and uh, you, you're going to come out amazing Pisces. All right, so hang in there. Enjoy the energies. You've got some really nice energies here. There's some really lovely stuff here too. So because Venus of course is exalted, right? So if ever we're having a, a tough time with one planet, we can look at someone else and Venus is exalted, Jupiter is in own house. It's a beautiful energy for the month of Feb. I want to thank you so much 
for tuning in. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I always love reading your comments, guys. I'm not replying to comments uh, as much now. I'm quite busy with readings and, and work and, and doing all kinds of things. So, uh, but let's see how I go. Hopefully, uh, you know, you will see me in the comments here and there, but I read all the comments and I love to hear from you. So let me know how you get on. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.